today we are going to be talking about how the Word of God is the life of God. The Word of God is the life of God. Now, you have to remember, God created everything with words. He did it through wisdom, knowledge, understanding. Words are things that, that come out of you that carry your wisdom, your knowledge, and your understanding. As a matter of fact, if I'm ever going to understand what you know, I'm going to have to hear some words or see some actions that can help me understand where you're at spiritually, physically, emotionally, socially, financially. I don't know where people are financially when it comes to money. I know where they are financially when it comes to their words and what they think because they may not be manifesting what they're really worth. You see, so I can't look at their money and say, well, I'll tell you what, they're very powerful. No, they're, they could be very, very poor financially out here, haven't manifested much wealth, but they got something on the inside of them that they're moving towards. That idea, those words, those thoughts are the things that you can hold on to. Those are the things that are very, very powerful. And so when it comes to the word, the level of your life is based on the words you think, the, the imagination that you're putting into play, everything that you're governing your life with that comes out of your words, your thoughts, your emotions, your feelings, every force in your, in your heart that's functioning, all that's coming out of words. So it makes only sense to me, spiritual sense, natural kind of sense, any way you want to put it, that God is what comes out of Him. And what comes out of God? Life. Well, how does He express that life? How does He manifest that life? How does He, how does he reveal that life? Well, He does it through words. Isn't that awesome? Now you kind of get an idea why, why He gave you the ability to speak words. Well, what about those people that can't talk? Man, words are more than... You got to understand, words aren't just something that you speak. Words are a force, man. The faith is not a feeling. Faith is a force that comes out of you. It comes out of you in words and actions. It comes out of you. It's a force. People can think. Thoughts are a force. They're a frequency. They're an energy. And you can have somebody thinking about something and never tell anybody anything, and those thoughts will produce what that man says or what he thinks. And eventually what happens is, is when you start thinking, let me tell you this, if you start thinking healing when your body is sick, people will start coming around you and say, hey man, I tell you, you sure look a whole lot better today. <laughs> and you ain't said anything, but your thoughts are so strong and you live in them. So your thoughts become the life of the energy that you abide in on the inside. So let's go to John chapter 15. You have been, I'm telling you guys have been created this way to go in and affect the world everywhere you go without even having to say a word. If your thoughts are strong enough, if you live in that realm where you're thinking, you can go and affect your whole world just by that. And of course, when the world comes to you, you'll open up your mouth and that's when the power, whew, boy, really hits. So John chapter 15, verse 7, and we'll include verse 8 in it if you want to uh, mend your notes there. If, 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 conditional, if you Abide in me. Oh, yes. I got Jesus in my heart. He's my Lord. Hallelujah. He's in my heart and I'm in his. Glory to God. That ain't what he's saying here. Because <laughs> we've been doing that for years and ain't nothing happening. Except we keep getting beat up by everything, all the circumstances around us. Let's finally wake up and realize that's not what he's saying here. He's saying, if conditionally you understand how to abide in his image. If you know how to put on the Lord. If you know how to walk in the light. If you know how to put on the armor of God and if you abide there in that image where you take on that image and you kind of get lost in him, you forget who you are naturally, you begin to take on his identity, if you do that. Now, who is doing that? Who do you know that does that? When you get around them, they sound like God. 
Who? I, I ain't meet anybody, I can tell you that. Me and my family, we're just coming into this concept, man. And we're just like, my gosh, man. And we're stepping out and we're starting to see some things and God's starting to manifest himself. Why? Because we're more and more getting our minds renewed to be conformed to the image of the one who raised us from the dead, who created us new creatures in Christ, who, who put his love and shed abroad it in our heart by the Holy Spirit, who's given us his peace, who's given us his faith, who's given us his life. That's for the whole sole purpose he gave it to you is to put on him. I can stop right there and I've just exceeded everything that the church has been teaching right there. I because we're all waiting to get that when we die and go to heaven. It's already in you. God, you know, some people say, well, you know, God wants us to have those things when we die and go to heaven. Hallelujah. That'll be the difference when we go to heaven. That's like, you know, a company giving you a phone, you know, and they put all this technology in it. But you say, well, they didn't put that in there for me to use it. I mean, I mean, if I stumble across it, I mean, I might be able to get. But I think they probably want me to, to just, you know, like maybe get the next model or something. No, he, they want you to use it. That's why they put the technology in there. Whatever God put in you, he wants you to use it. So if you abide in me and my words abide in you. Now, what is his word? It's his life. So if you abide in his image, then guess what? You'll walk out his life that's in that image. So if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you will. Can you see the transference of power and authority? See, if you abide in me and my words, see, he's saying if you abide in me and my words, if you abide in me and my words, then you. <laughs> that takes us back to, to Matthew chapter 28, where there during the last verses or so. He said, all authority has been given to me both in heaven and earth. Now you go. Transference of authority here. But guess what? If is conditional. So if you don't abide in me, and if you, my word doesn't abide in you, then you won't go and say nothing, and nothing's going to happen. You see that? You won't say it. Therefore, nothing's going to happen. And every moment you don't open up your mouth and say something is another moment, nothing happens. You see? So when you begin to take on this image, good God Almighty, and take on that identity, and take on that peace, take on that faith, take on that word, and put it in you, Oh my gosh, everything about your image changes. It gets conformed to the image of the Son of God. And that's what he sent into the world so that people would not perish. He said, I send my Son. Oh, he sent Jesus. No, he sent you. <laughs> that's why he tells you, go into the world. You, in other words, the Son of God is a position, but it's locked up and it's vibrant only in the life of God, which is in his word. Did y'all get that? You, you got that, right? I mean, this is a concept everybody understands. Oh, yes, I've, I've memorized a few scriptures, and, and I believe when I, when I say it is written. No. <laughs> How many times have you said, now it's written, devil, get thee behind me? And he goes, eh, 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 eh. He says, I see that little costume you got on. Like Halloween, you put on the costume. That's not the real you. Isn't that right? That's what we do. We go to church, put on a little Jesus costume. Eh, eh. Yeah, that's what we do. And when church is over with, we take the costume off. All right. <laughs> you know, we, and we do all those things that's really our nature, right? That's who we really are. We're going to be who we want. And dare, dare anybody to say that we're anything not. I didn't go to church last week because I had this, 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 this. All these excuses and all these reasons and all this other stuff. Trying to protect a certain image that you're pretending to be. <laughs> See? Don't pretend. Step into him. Lose yourself. John the Baptist got it right. He said, less of me, more than him. I must decrease. He must increase. He's not talking about, okay, I must die and then his ministry must come forward. He's announcing something very serious. He's saying, the outer man must decrease, but this inner man must increase. That's what John the Baptist was really trying to say. All right. So if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done. I'm telling you right now that that's authority you can't shake. That's an authority that says it's done. Done means a, it's a superlative, man. When it said it shall be done, it's a guarantee. Well, I know. I just, you know, maybe it's first come, first serve, you know, like they do on Christmas time where people will go to, go to Belk and whoever gets that card, whoever gets the card, gets there first, you know, early bird gets the worm. No, he's saying if you do this and you take on his image, which is available to everybody. Why? Because you're born of him. <laughs> You've got it. 
You have his life in you already or you wouldn't be standing right now. It's his spiritual life. It's just been cut off from this natural way we've been living and the way we've been trained. But if you can tap into that inner man, good God Almighty. Now you speak from him. It's called the word of God. I thought the word of God was that which is written. That's the word of God and that's it. No, this word was inspired by the spirit of God upon men that spoke it. When they spoke it, it became the Word of God, and they wrote it down. Now, that's a principle, friend, and that's what it is every time God says something to you and you say it. Man, that's inspired Word. That's the Word of God. Now, that puts you in a position where you are so powerful, but you take your words for granted because you don't step in Him. You don't abide in Him. You don't believe that His image makes your words powerful. Why? Because we're too busy being oopie doops <laughs> Hey, how you doing? I'm, doing? I'm fine. How are you? You know, what are you doing today? Well, I'm just kind of be bobbing along. No sense of purpose, no sense of this and that, because we have no sense of authority, no sense of power. You walk into the room with some guy that's got a PhD, and you feel like you're there. Well, I, I didn't even graduate high school, and I'm not going to get around them. I just, I just can't talk to them. I mean, they know so much, and yet you have the God of all creation, His Spirit abiding in you, and you act like you ain't got another. That's the reason why the life of God cannot come out. Because it's not going to lie for anybody. You act like an oopie doop, that's all that's coming out of you. You start acting like a son of God, you're going to have His power come out of you, His wisdom, His knowledge, His ability come out of you. And the people around you will start taking notice. They'll say, man, you're saying something I ain't never heard before. I can't tell you how many times I've had people say that. Hey, what Bible are you reading from? I mean, I don't find that in my Bible. Yes, you do. you got a King James Bible sitting right here. <laughs> it's, it's the Bible. But more than anything, I want you to hear the words I'm saying because the words that I'm saying are coming out of a spiritual part of me that is being inspired by the Spirit of God even as I talk to you. That's called the Word of God and that's the Word that's released that has life in it. And that's the Word you've got to get a hold of. This is the reason why we hear so many preachers. We don't believe what they say. We just kind of go to the Word and let me see if I can validate what he's saying. Yeah, but you've missed the life that's been in the words that they spoke to you. When you hear the Word of God, you need to grab it, man. You need to get it. You need to come here with the purposes. You say it. I got it. It is done. It's settled. It's got life. I receive the life. Nobody can take it from you. And the Word and the life that's in that Word will not return unto you void because you've already received it. I am telling you, friends, the only thing I'm telling you is what you already are. I'm not trying to impart something to you. I'm trying to use a Word as a switch as think that will cut the life on to see the light that you already possess. <laughs> see, do you see that? That's what's so awesome about the gospel. He, the gospel is there telling you what you already are. Jesus was trying to show you what you already are. But if you're running from the Word, you're cutting off the life of God that's within you. How do you run from the Word? By not talking like God. You see, you're going to have to stand up in some kind of authority. And you can't do that by faking it. you got to know. That's why you come to the teachings. This is why you go to the, the courses. This is why you've got to go to those videos to find out who you are so you can stand up in the image of it. There is something so supernatural about every single one of us. And that's the person you've got to connect to. That's the person you've got to become every day. You've got to stop being the oopie doop. You've got to stop, well, I'm just trying to make it. You don't understand what I'm going through. Stop going through it. I can't stop going through it. My body hurts, man. <laughs> See? Now you're letting your body tell you who you are. So your identity is wrapped up in what your body is saying and not your body saying who you are and revealing the glory of the Father. How do you get to that place? By believing that you are life. And every word you speak has the life of God in it. It's why you got to hold your tongue and not just get out there and say a bunch of death and idle words. You get out there and you talk to people about their destiny. You may not even know what their destiny is. Start talking destiny. You'll start getting their attention. Well, it's like, you, it's like you, you believe in me already. I do. You see, the blueprint's already been put in there. I already know what you're to become. You're a son of God and you're going to change the world. Most people are like, yeah, but you know, I, mean, I, I can't get a job. A job ain't got nothing to do with your potential. <laughs> there's something, I'm telling you right now, there's something in you that only you have. <laughs> and, and that is the power of God, the life of God in you that's going to take you to where you step every day. See, nobody's walking in your footsteps. 
You are. So you take the life of God everywhere you go. Nobody can mimic you. Nobody can copy that. Nobody can do that as far as your life. They can feed off of your life. Use your life as an example. But they're not going to wake up, step into you, and kind of walk you out. <laughs> That's something you got to do. So the power of God within you can change everything in your, in your uh, arena of life, wherever, wherever you are. So listen to this. Verse 8. Herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. Now, friends, some people believe, and I did for years, go to church, go to that revival meeting, feel a conviction. When they give the altar call, you know, you kind of slide on down the aisle. You know, pastor will lay hands on you. You say a simple prayer, Father, you know, forgive me of my sin. Jesus, come into my heart. Be my... And they say, oh, let's welcome the new brother and sister in the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. And then they pat you on the booty kind of like, okay, go on, little child. Go on, go on. Now go sit back in your seat. Now come back next week. <laughs> and then the next week. And then the next week. And, and, and then they're born again, and then they've... What next? See, they're not given a teaching on who they really are and identity, so they go back to talking the same way. Their, their image is still the same. And they thought they got born again. That's what life is. That's what, that's what I'm supposed to do. That's, that's my purpose. No, he says right here, Herein is my Father glorified. So He wants you to abide in Him and His Word abide in you. Take on His image so the Father will be glorified. Now the word Father there is dealing with source power. Source power. So that the... Pa Look. <laughs> this stuff is, is getting so... In the church, it's getting so blown out of proportion that people are losing the meaning of things because of doctrinal differences. The... When you get born again, when you take on the image of God, the Father is glorified in you. The Father desires to be glorified in the Son. What does that mean? Let's put it this way. See, the life of the battery desires to be seen. See, the power in the battery desires to be seen. How? Through the manifestation of the radio or the manifestation of the toy that crawls on the ground. See, that's the only way you're going to see the power. Through the product. You see, now take the battery out. The product just sits there dead as a doorknob. And that's where most people are. They're walking around dead with no life to manifest, no proof of the Father abiding in them. Why? They don't take on the image. They're, they don't walk by the empowerment of Christ in them. So it's like having the battery on and nobody ever cutting the switch on. <laughs> you know, and the thing just sits there like, <laughs> I wonder why the toy doesn't do it. So the kid grabs it, you know, and does all of this, but it's got a little button down there. If you just cut it on, it'll walk on its own. <laughs> See? That's what it means to walk in the life. Walk in the life. Cut the life on. Find your identity. Find the power. Because if you abide in that power, abide in it, then you're going to fully function in the earth, and you're going to reveal the power source on the inside of you. Good God Almighty, man. See, if we can, if the church will teach that, then everybody else can say, hold on a second, man. I got... I'm full of power here. Yeah, so it's not about just raising your hands and worshiping the Lord and singing songs and giving your tithe and going to hearing the message and, and just going and doing it again, three points in a poem, shake the pastor's hand, go out, and then go have a, you know, a potluck dinner and everybody get together and you do all these things and isn't that just wonderful? And nobody knows who they are. And they all get together and talk about the problems. They don't have no idea who they are. We don't realize we're full of His power. So just imagine, if you don't know you're full of power, then your words become so weak, they're not empowered by the image you have on the inside. You want to know who has authority? Find the person who knows something. That person's got authority. Because their, their speech is different. They don't cower down when they get in the presence of somebody. Well, you know, I, I don't really know that much about it. Yes, you do. You probably got more knowledge of things than anybody you get in front of. Well, talk from that position of authority and the knowledge that you have. And now they start seeing that. Man, that person speaks with such authority. See, God wants you to know the kind of power that you have so you'll speak with that kind of authority that'll move heaven and earth. Now, whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth is loosed in heaven. See, I'm pointing to you. This is you. This is you. Well, I thought that was Jesus. No, that's Christ. Christ in you is to build you up and to make and to edify you, to charge you up to the image and the life and all the manifestation of the God that abides on the inside of you. So you can stop looking up and going, oh God, you can step out and say, God's here. 
Yes, he is. He's in me. Greater is he that's in me. Don't you ever be ashamed to say that. Well, you're acting like you're talking like you're God. Good. That means I'm doing something that you're ashamed of. And then you can, now you can fall. Now you can hear something you've never heard of before. Now step in and let's go. Stop pushing this stuff away. This is what you desire. You desire for God to show up. God's not going to show up apart from you. I've said this many a time. Nothing happens until you happen. So you're going to have to step into him and not be ashamed. <laughs> and step into him. I just don't believe all of that. They don't teach that in my denomination. <laughs> Get out. <laughs> Quickly. If you're in a, I'm telling you guys, I love, I love God's people. What I can't stand is a dead religion or a dead doctrine. I can't stand it because it limits people. It puts a cap on your potential. If you're going to a church and you're sitting there, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing it'll be. What about today? Well, we ain't got to heaven yet. <laughs> If you're in a church that's trying to postpone your victory until some other time, get out. We are all victims of those who taught us, and you're going to have to come to the conclusion that if you're following somebody who's not going anywhere, if you're following somebody who has no life in them and they've got no potential to even find it until after they die, get away from them quick. Because your job is to prove the glory of God on the inside of you. You have got to manifest the Father. It is your job. It's the only reason you're here, to be the light of the world of heaven to the world you go into. You're not to go in there and just be a little light to the, to the world and tell them about Jesus. Who's been doing that? Everybody. They can't stop death yet by doing that. And that's the whole goal. You get out there and have authority over death with the life of God in you. You have just become the number one commodity the world's looking for. And that's my job is to tell you that I'm not going to sit here and just tell you just go to church and, you know, do the best you can. Read your Bible. I'm sorry, I'm just not going to do all that. I'm not saying you need to read your Bible. Definitely read your Bible. But you better read it in the light of God telling you who you are. Because the Word of God is the life you're going to walk out. And only to the measure that you believe it. If you don't believe God's word, if you don't believe this scripture right here, that the Father or desires to be glorified in you, that He desires that you bear much fruit, oh yes, He does. He wants me to have a smile on my face and joy in my heart. You'll know them by their fruits. <laughs> no, the fruit you and I are to bear is the glory. It's not a bunch of fruit trees of all different kinds of fruits, is one fruit. All the fruit of the Spirit is, is revealing an identity. It's called the glory. It's the glory of God in motion. It's all about the life of God. See, now, listen carefully. This is something you just got to get a hold of. I mean, you, you got to see this. Now, let's, <laughs> let's please get this. Don't let this slip by you because if you do, you're going to miss the whole thing. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified that you may bear much fruit, so shall, it be. Uh, so shall you be my disciples. Now listen carefully. I don't care whether you're joining a business company of some sort out there in the market, whatever you're doing. I don't care whether it's a church. I don't care whether it's uh, you're in covenant with somebody, get married. The, this law is a law. If you abide in me, speaking of a company, and then my thoughts and ideas and my, my instructions abide in you, then guess what? You're going to be promoted because you become an ambassador of the life, intention, thoughts of that company. It is a principle he's referring to here. He's not talking about you just abiding in Jesus and Jesus' words abiding in you. He's talking about, no, if you will abide in His image and take on the word of that image, start talking like what that image demands that you talk like. God don't talk like the devil, you see. It depends on what image you walk in. You, talk, you walk in the image of God, you start talking like Him, not about Him. You start talking like Him. Then when you do that, the Father's going to be glorified in what you do, and what you say is going to happen. See, now that's going to be the same thing that takes place whenever you step into the business. If you abide in the business, that company, 
There's a reason why they hired you. You get immersed in that job, and then the thoughts and intents of the company get immersed in you, then pretty soon you're going to be elevated to a higher position. Other people are going to start listening to what you say. This is a principle he's revealing here. It's not just about Jesus. You've got to understand it's not just about the Bible here. This is, he's trying to always reveal how the laws of the kingdom function. So if you do that, so, so let's take it down to this point. Let's take it to this. I'm going to put me in the equation now, but listen carefully, so don't misunderstand. I'm not trying to take the place of God in the Word, but I'm trying to show you the principle. If you listen to what I'm saying today, and if you abide in the image of the words that I'm sharing with you, if you can see yourself with what I'm saying, if you can see yourself walking in the earth as an ambassador of Christ Almighty, having all the power of the kingdom with you, if you can see that, then you're abiding in my word. You're abiding in the image. So if you abide in me, and my job is to give you words that produce an image of what God shows me on the inside. So if you will abide in me and then take those words and put them in your heart, put them in your mouth, put them in your ears, put them in your eyes, see yourself with them, hear yourself saying them, talk like they are your life. Then whatever you ask, I'll be done. <laughs> Do you see that? It's the reason why you don't come and just listen to a message and say, that was, that was a pretty good message. I, I liked it. Yeah, it was all right. Well, what did he talk about? Well, I don't really know, but it sounded like it was pretty cool. <laughs> you know, you see, now that's not abiding in the Word. When you get immersed in the Word, you're going to the YouTube channel. You're getting immersed in the Word. It's all you're listening to all day long. You're listening to the Word. You're listening to these YouTube channels, the, the videos. You're listening. You're going to the podcast. Why? Just so I can get you to listen to me and don't listen to nobody else? No, I just want you immersed in the thing that's going to get you to where God sees you quick. And the sad truth is, is that I haven't seen a whole lot of videos on TikTok that'll take you there. I haven't seen a whole lot of videos on a lot of the preaching videos that I've taken a look at where it's not all religious. It's just not all, you know, most of it is just talking about God, but it's never getting you to a place where you find out who you really are. So if you want to get there quick, you gotta, you got to step away from all of that stuff and get your mind so immersed in the Word that you become that. Now, this is not about starting a new religion. It's not about you know me being some guru or nothing like that. This is about trying to get your thinking to where you can see yourself as an ambassador of Christ and that you carry the kingdom with you and you start talking like the king. You start talking like you've got the authority and that the king's going to back up everything you say. You can't do that just by talking about how Jesus loves you. If you ain't figured that out yet, you need to start coming more to these broadcasts and start getting to these teachings. Now, I'm not trying to get down on anybody. I'm trying to help you get out of the pit of religion that you've been in. Jesus didn't come to give you just, you know, a, a good little Christian church, whatever corner you want to go on to, because there's churches on about every, you know, every corner in every town. He wants you to take on an identity so that you can get the attention of everyone that's in the churches with the power of God through the identity of putting His Word on. So life in my Word equals my life in you. Lord have mercy. I hope you, you need to write that down. Life in Adam's words equals Adam's life in me. Oh. Now, when I say Adam, the only reason I'm saying Adam is just because of the connection here. It's because you're looking at me. You see that? Now, now you can replace it because ultimately it's not Adam's life, obviously. It is life in my words. Life that's Christ in me. It's the only way I can reveal Christ in me is through my words and actions. So don't misunderstand and say, see that? He wants me to fall down and worship him. No, you be in a deep hole if you do that. I don't even do that. I'm, are you kidding? Please, let me warn you right now. Put a warning at the end of this thing. Do not do that. Don't. No. But Christ in me and what I'm giving you in these words is Christ. And that's what I want you to take. So if you're hearing them from me, that's the only reason I say put my name in. It's just so you can have a point of contact where you get your words from. It's the Spirit of God, man. It's God. I'm telling you, we can just dissect the Bible and go through all the word studies and all that, but it all comes down to it. It's about life, death, blessing, and cursing, and which one are you choosing? 
Nothing is greater than God's life, and God's life is in His Word. If His Word is in you, you got nothing that can put you out, put you down. Nothing. But you have to determine whether you're abiding in there, whether you're getting immersed in the Word of God, whether you are taking on the image to the point where you start talking like God. If you're not doing that, then you ain't doing nothing except being a, a Christian that goes to church and takes on a denominational badge. Or some people have the non-denominational non badge. It's still a badge. <laughs> Because the non-denominationals kind of look at the Baptists and the Methodists and the Pentecostals and all that and like, well, you're in the denomination and we're non-denomination. And yet non-denomination is a denomination, <laughs> you know. But who is Christ? If you be Christ, then you're Abraham's seed. Well, I can't, I'm not Christ. It's only because you don't understand the Word of God and the life that's in it and what really abides in you. That's my job is to get that over to you if i got to tell you every day. And by the way, I do. <laughs> I tell you every day. That's why I come up here. You guys are my passion. If I can just get one person to catch a hold of this, you're going to change everything. Because you're no longer going to look at yourself through your experiences, through your physical inabilities and all the sickness. and the you, don't, you don't even look at that anymore. You start taking on the life of Christ, didn't you? And that life is what eradicates all the sickness, the disease, the poverty. It eradicates everything. And then whatever's in you comes out of you. It's like a volcano, man. When the volcano erupts, everything that's on the outside of the mountain is getting ready to change. <laughs> you understand that? That's why, now get this, when the Bible said the word of God, speak to the mountain, it shall be moved. What he's trying to tell us is like a volcano. When, when the fire of God's glory comes out of you when you speak, then everything on the mountain is going to change its topography, man. Everything is changing. It's no longer going to have the rocks and the bumps like it had before. No, fire on the inside is going to change the way it looks. We've been saying, mountain, move in the name of Jesus. Well, the mountain is going to, it's like a volcano, man. It's going to erupt with the fire of God. And it's going to change everything that's on the mountain. <laughs> Let that, let that, that um, lava, I'm telling you right now, it say you got, a, you got a volcano, man. It's got like Mount St. Helens. It blew, man, the whole thing. When it blew, it changed the whole mountain and everything. All the trees on it, gone. See, all the frustration and sickness, gone. Just like that when the glory shows up. My God, I get so excited about this. So nothing is greater than God's life. Let's go to John chapter 10, verse 10, and we'll be done here in just a second. Then I'm going to talk to you for a few minutes. John chapter 10, verse 10. My God, I'm so excited about this. Because this is life. This is, this is the thing that Jesus was trying to get over to everybody. And they missed it. Made a religion out of the thing. I had, I had a guy that was, that was writing me, and, and this guy was kind of like, man, uh, you know, uh, you're involved in this religion, and it's all this and that. And he was trying to come down on me. I'm, I'm like, man, the only thing that really matters is life. <laughs> life and death. And uh, his uh, wife died of cancer. Been married to her, I think, 30 years and died of cancer. And I told him this. I told him this, and I'm not afraid to say it. I said, I wish I had known her because I could have stopped it. So I was written back a comment. He said, well, well, let me just call, you know, Cancer Society and tell them you have found the answer. And I said, well, I'm so glad you're finally listening to me. <laughs> you know? I know he was saying sarcastically, but the point is, is that if you can get somebody like that, listen, you can get cancer solved really quick. But see, we've got so much, we lean so much towards money, we'd rather have the campaigns to collect money because we're not using it all towards cancer research. Somebody lying in their pockets with it. Nobody really wants, see, I really believe that there is the cure for all diseases in the Word of God, but nobody's running to it because we've made a business out of medicine. We've made a business out of it. You get your medicine today, next week you're going to have to get a different kind of medicine because they've upgraded it now. Now they're going to have to charge your insurance. It is a racket, friends. And if people knew that they have the life of God in them, the Word of God that is the life of God, that He said, I sent my Word and I healed you and delivered you from all your instructions or destruction and delivered you from all your instructions. You never get delivered from your instructions. <laughs> He's not going to change the Word. But your destructions, that's what we've got to decide. Sickness, whenever it hits me, Whenever something tries to come at me, it gets off. If I see it coming, it's going to go the other way. If something hits me and maybe I'm blindsided, maybe I get off on some things and, and, and boom, because I've got, got the potential to get off like anybody else does. And when something hits me, boy, it gets my attention quick. No way does a man of God, a son of God, have that in his body. 
well, that ain't fair. That's putting a lot of hard stuff on people. No, it's not. I'm trying to set them free. I'm trying to get them to recognize who they are. And therefore, all of us have got the limitations that we have had in our lives. We're going to get them off if we'll just get immersed in it because your mind's got to be renewed. My mind's got to be renewed. I ain't arrived yet, but I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Praise God. So verse 10, The thief cometh not before to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. What does it mean to have abundant life? Abundant life is God's objective for you and me. It's not an abundance of money. It's not an abundance of, of just things. It's not it. It's an abundance of life. He wants you to walk in His life, an abundance of it. So much life that it swallows up death. That was Jesus' goal. That's what we were told. God sent His Son into the world so that, though that anybody that believed would not perish but have everlasting life. It's always the goal from Genesis to Revelation. Anytime we make it something else, anytime we're using it just to, to make money or try to get something from somebody, that we've, we've missed the mark, especially when it comes to the gospel. But God will give you some things. Like I'm going to share with you today, God's, God's done some things in my life and showed something to me. I'm really, really excited about it. And I'll talk about it as soon as I get off the live here. I want you guys to know I appreciate you guys coming here. God bless you for it. And until we meet again, I'm Adam King. God bless you. Bye-bye.